what a day! What a lovely day! What happens when a flashlight company decides to make an EDC folding knife? Well, it's usually a bad idea and it ends up being a shit product. <coughs> oh, like... Know your fucking place, trash! However, I believe with the MechForce M1, this might be the exception to the rule. Welcome back, guys. Jim here once again. And today we're going to be taking a look at something that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. First off, you're surprised to see it on my channel. Secondly, if you've ever seen this knife, I think that you're going to be surprised at, honestly, how well executed it is. Because I sure as shit was. Here's the deal. Um, I was chatting with a friend of mine one night on Instagram in direct message. And we started talking about this knife. He had just recently gotten one. And he's like, have you seen one of these yet? I'm like, uh, no. He's like, you really should check it out. So there were a couple of reviews that I saw online. A um, couple by people that I, I just I couldn't sit through their videos. And a couple like uh, Lefty EDC who I did enjoy, that went really far in depth and really explored what this knife was all about, and it intrigued me. So I reached out to MechForce and I said, hey, I can't seem to just find one of these just anywhere. Um, what are the chances I can get one of these from you for review? They're like, absolutely happy to do it. Um, which one would you like? And I'm like, I really, it doesn't really matter. So I just chose one of the carbon fiber variations. And I got to tell you, the day that I opened this box, this was not one of those days where I'm, I'm checking my tracking all day. I know what's coming in. I, I'm standing out beside the mailbox and I'm excited and waiting. I did want to see it and I thought it was going to be pretty cool, but I honestly didn't have high hopes for it. So it was like, eh, okay, the package arrived. So I cut into it. It took me a minute to get into the box because I didn't realize there was a little tab on the bottom and I'm like... It's, it's all suction, and you can't get into the box. We all know suction is good, but not always for your packaging. So once I finally got it open, the first thing I did, I didn't look at the other contents. I didn't even check out visually the whole knife yet. The first thing I did was I flipped it open, and I let the blade drop. And I'm like, huh, all right. You got my interest peaked a little bit. Then I started checking out the whole thing, and I realized why so many people, including myself, have been so fascinated with this knife. It's the fact that when you're looking at it, it's so clean. The lines are so well done. The fact that you don't have any exposed hardware doesn't take away from any of the design aspects of the knife I think it looks fantastic. The only hardware you've got on there, which is completely unavoidable on a frame lock if you want to have a steel lock insert, are just the two screws that are holding in the steel lock insert on the lock bar. All the way around, I kept looking at the lines. I looked at how sleek it was. I looked at how the blade disappeared into the handle. I looked at the quality of the finishing of this carbon fiber. And I could not pick this knife apart. I was like, there's a lot to love here. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect. Far from it. And it may not be worth you spending the price that they have on it. I, I can't determine that for you. All I could do is tell you my personal thoughts on it. If I feel that it's worth it, if it's something that I'm going to be keeping in my collection and actually carrying and using... And you guys make up your own minds from there. And this is typically what I do. I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't make any money whether you buy a knife today or tomorrow or at any other time from any brand at all except for my knives that I make myself. Period. That's it. So I don't care whether you buy something or not. So what I can do is just tell you why the knife is what it is, where it came from, if I feel that it's worth the expense, whatever that price point may be, and if it's something that I would personally use with the hundreds of knives that I already have in my collection, is this worthy of adding? 
So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. I took a few pictures of it. Let's take a look at the photography. Then we're going to go down to the tabletop and we're going to explore this knife together and see if it really is all it's cracked up to be. All right, let's get things going here with the packaging. And this is one of the very few things that I'm not all that crazy about with this knife. For somebody that's only been purchasing consumer grade knives, maybe they shop at Walmart or something like that, they might be used to seeing packaging like this. But this knife, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, is better than that. It deserves cleaner, classier, nicer packaging. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Nobody really gives a shit. They're going to take the knife out of the box and they're going to store the box away with all the stuff that's inside until they need it. And that's it. You're probably never going to see it again. But, you know, it's that whole first impression thing. I've talked about this for a decade here on my channel. And it... it the packaging does not do this knife justice. However, one thing I do dig is they put all the information that you absolutely need right there on the side of the box. So instead of putting up the whole specs thing up on the screen on this, on this video, I'm just going to read it right off the box. How cool is that? And on the bottom, it does show you the individual knife that you're going to be receiving, uh, which has the Arctic Storm Fat Carbon Carbon Fiber. And you'll notice here it says partially made in the USA. I am going to talk about that, and I'm going to talk about it right after the specs because I know that's going to be important to a lot of people. And I guarantee you're making assumptions that uh, aren't actually valid. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Suction, suction, get the box open. Okay, so inside of the box, if you're unfamiliar with this knife, everything in this little bag is going to confuse the living hell out of you. Let's get this open. Uh, I believe this is probably going to be instructions on how to do the unique thing that it does. Oh, that's your warranty. Okay, cool. You get a MechForce sticker. You get a Mech. Oh, it's not a MechForce Band-Aid. It's just a regular old Johnson & Johnson Band-Aid. But you're probably going to need it because it's pretty sharp. And I know half of my audience are mouth breathers. And you're probably going to cut yourself. This is pretty damn cool. I am not going to be able to get it to focus on this properly. But there we go. Your Certificate of Authenticity, I wonder if that's titanium, It's it, it looks like titanium, it could be titanium, I should have asked. Anyway, uh, it tells you everything that you need to know, it tells you the, the materials that it's made out of, even when it was born, how cool is that, you have a date of birth. That is neato, dude. Very cool. Serial number 99. I'm going to show you where that correlates to the uh, knife. And let's get that out of there. And you're probably looking at this going, why? Why is there double-sided 3M sticky stuff in here? Because that is one of the most interesting things about this knife. The reason why you have hidden hardware here 
is because these carbon fiber scales are actually inlaid into a channel and then stuck in instead of being screwed in so that you can easily pop them out. And, and all you're going to do is use this little tool here and you're going to pop it in there and you're just going to push. There's a little slot right in there. And you're just going to, you're just going to pry and you're going to pop one end of that carbon fiber up. And what I would use is like a uh, plastic credit card. Get it under the lip and just slide it and pop it out. And then you can peel out the old 3M tape and put in the new 3M tape when you want to put it back together. Now, I had debated for a while with myself if I was going to take it apart on video or not. And I decided not to. You know why? Because if you don't pay a lot of very close attention and you don't do it just right, you're going to mark up the titanium. Why would I care about that? Because I actually really, really, really like this knife. And it is going to be a knife that I carry and that I use. And to be honest with you, I didn't want to scratch it up. However, in the description below for this video, I'm going to link you to my buddy Kev's video, Lefty EDC. And he reviewed one of these, and he went into painstaking detail, taking the scales out, showing how to take the knife apart, all that kind of good stuff. So you'll still be able to see it. And I want you to go sub his channel, because he's a super dude. And uh, I I'm not going to fuck up my knife here, because I really dig it. So anyway, let's do all the important stuff, shall we? Let's get all this stuff back together in the box. We will talk more about the, the, the disassembly of what makes this knife unique and all that kind of good stuff. Don't worry. But I just want to kind of put all this back together because I kind of dig this idea of being able... Oh, look at that. Look how cool that is. So let's talk about the specs. First off, we're looking at the MechForce M1 Flipper. And you're looking at $350 as the base price and it goes up just a little bit from there. Your overall length is 8.2 inches. Your blade length is 3.5 inches. Three and a half inch blade length, perfect for EDC. It's one of my absolute favorite blade lengths for EDC, and I'm gonna give you some size comparisons here uh, against knives out of my collection that compare to it, and I love it. I think it's a great, great size. Uh, let's see, the blade steel is M390. Blade thickness, 160 thousandths of an inch. Uh, again, hidden hardware design because of the inlays. Your backspacer is titanium anodized. Your clip is titanium anodized. You have a hardened steel lock insert. You have ceramic bearing pivot, uh, which I'm going to have to then assume you're going to be getting a ceramic detent. It wouldn't make sense to have a steel detent ball if you've already bought ceramic balls. And you have a lanyard opening at the end of the backspacer. Now, the base price on these is $350. When you get into the fat carbon version like mine, it's $385. So that is your quick specs breakdown. Now, I know a lot of you want to know what this whole partially made in the U.S. is, in case you... Uh, we're really, really wondering what that is on the box. And that is super important to know. The parts for this knife, for let me let me take a, a little step back. Everything is manufactured by MechForce in-house. That's very, very important to get out of the way first. They are making parts in a facility they own in Pennsylvania, a facility they own in Texas, and a facility they own in China. The one in China. All they're doing is the blades. Everything else is being cut and machined and everything here in uh, both Pennsylvania and Texas. And then all the assembly, as I understand it, is done here in the United States as well. Now, MechForce is their own manufacturer. They own all of the facilities, all of the plants, employ all of the employees, own all of the machinery. That means you're getting a higher degree of quality control because they're not subbing it out. They're not subcontracting it out to someone who they have to trust is doing their job appropriately. Oh, that action. Sweet. 
Daniel, the owner of Mac Force, happens to be a big knife guy. As you know, Mac Force is all about making EDC pocket torches. That's their thing. So with him being a big knife guy, a huge fan and collector of knives, it kind of made sense for him to develop knives to add to his catalog of the pocket torches and the fidget gadgets that he makes. The M1 is a limited production knife. I want you to keep that in mind so you're not always going to be able to find them easily. And basically, when you do, the ones that you're going to find are the one that has the titanium inlay that's anodized blue, and the other one is the marbled carbon fiber inlay. This, um, as far as I know, was made as a special edition for Blade Show. Inside of the backspacer will be marked your individual limited edition number that matches the COA plaque that you saw in the packaging. It's pretty slick. So you, the, the two standard ones I just told you about, everything else are special editions that are even more limited than the other ones. They're all limited by nature. And every time there's a big event, big show, things like that, they're going to be doing different limited edition. This one with the Arctic Storm, I love the colors. I love Fat Carbon. I've worked with Fat Carbon quite a bit on some of the knives that I make. Uh, I've owned a lot of knives with Fat Carbon scales and inlays. And I just think it's a stunning product. It's wildly different, wonderfully unique, very, very slick. Uh, now, you guys know I collect high-end torches, uh, even make some. This is the one that, uh, that I designed. Um, I have an entire playlist dedicated to EDC flashlights. If you haven't watched any of those videos, definitely do so. I'll try to remember to put an end card uh, at the end of this video here that you can just click it. It'll take you to the playlist. Um, I love flashlights. I think they're one of the most practical things we can EDC. So if you haven't seen MechForce's flashlights, go check out their website. They've got some pretty wicked designs. They're very... Well, MechForce, really, it's, it's a great name for the brand. It's a very mechanical, industrial, but futuristic at the same time kind of uh, dealio going on with the designs. I think they're pretty cool. Um, so, where, where did I leave off? Okay, so let's talk about the key element of the design. There, there are two key elements in my mind. Number one is the fact that you've got the hidden hardware. The only exposed hardware are just these two screws here that hold in the, uh, the steel lock insert. That's it. Everything else is hidden behind these carbon fiber panels that once again, maybe I can give you a better look at it now, you pop out from the inside. Right there. So you would stick the tool in and you would just wedge it and then it'll push on the inside of the scale, and then you just peel it out. You'll do the same thing on the other side, and you're done. And you'll see the uh, how the frame lock is assembled from there, and you'll gain access to the pivot. Now, this pivot came adjusted perfectly. There is no play, left or right, up and down, nothing. Very, very well done. Another thing that's well done is the jimping. This, when I talk about my preferences in jimping, this is it right here. It's a very fine jimping that if you just run your fingers up and down it, doesn't tear open your skin, it's not going to tear up your clothing, but when you push down into it, it locks your skin in. This is perfect jimping. I'm very, very happy with that. So anyway, the key design elements, the first I already talked about, which was the hidden hardware. The second is the sleek design, the way the blade disappears into the handle. Now, when you open it, that gives you a, a different balance in the blade to handle ratio. The handle is going to be a little bit taller in order to be able to do that. But this is something that I've always appreciated. I really love the look of a blade that disappears into the handle. Obviously, they don't need to, but I just like when some makers or some brands do this. The design work on this is really well done. I love the finishing of the, the matte bead blasted and stonewashed titanium that goes all the way around. Gives you a nice contrast to the blue anodized 
pocket clip and backspacer, which by the way, backspacer is also blind screwed, so there's no exposed hardware there. I even like how they stylized the, the relief cuts for the lock bar. And by the way, nicely chamfered, so there's no, no sharp edges as you run your finger along this. Again, brilliant design work. A low profile flipper tab with more of that superb jimping. You can light switch it, and you can also push button it. It does like to be push buttoned a little bit more. It'll rock it out a little bit faster, uh, but either way, it works just fine. Now, when I first got it, I had a hard time getting past the detent ramp right here. It has eased itself in very, very quickly though. It was gonna be something I was gonna knock because I'm like, man, it really feels weird as it engages uh, that detent hole right there. It's really, really bothersome. But that lasted maybe a day and it has just broken in wonderfully. It was almost like a two-stage trigger on your AR. You know, you, you, you'd feel it get to that one point, it would stop, and then it would have to break past that wall. Now it's not like that. It just closes wonderfully smooth, very fast, and very easy. It feels like a very high-end knife. It really, really does. I really, really want to see them offer additional inlays to be able to purchase. I really think that's a that's a missed opportunity here because the these are so easily removed and you're able to get you get a couple sets of the the pre-cut 3M tape in the box already, but on their website you can order more very cheaply. It's already laser cut, I'm assuming laser, but it's already cut to this exact shape. You just drop it in and you're done. So if, if that's already available to you, I really, really wish that you were able to buy as sets just additional scales, $50, $60, whatever the, the cost may be, because everybody likes to play dress up, you know? You could have so many different personalities in this one knife. It's crazy. So that's just my personal opinion. I think that's a... It's a missed opportunity. Um, the M1 here is a drop point, but uh, I was given some information just today that nobody else knows. There is going to be a Tanto version coming out very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I think that's going to really complement the shape of the frame really, really well. Um, there are also other interesting projects in the hopper that I can't discuss, but they sound pretty rad. One is a collaboration with someone very exciting. I can't say who it is. It, it is somebody I consider a friend that I greatly admire, and uh, he will undoubtedly add even more prestige to the brand. I think, I think with what they're going to be doing together, I think it's going to change the direction of this brand forever, and I'm very excited for them. I promised you I would give you some size comparisons, so let's do that. The closest comparison I can make to something in my collection is my custom r &H Knives Tasca 2. Now, you're looking at a knife here that's $385, and another one that's just about $800. There is a significant price difference. But I'm going to tell you right now, while there are going to be differences between them, they're a lot more similar than I would have expected. The way that they chose to pocket where the inlays go in to, to leave a border of titanium going all the way around, that's exactly what the Tasca 2 has. They both close up and give a very, very sleek look that, uh, that tapers toward the back end. So there's a lot of similarities there. Now, the, uh, the task is uh, a little bit lighter, it seems to be, in my hand. And I will weigh them here in a minute just to be sure. Another knife I want to put it up against because of similar concepts is the King Freeman X, the, uh, the Forever Steel Cybertrix. Because it, too, has a clever way of hiding its hardware. With this one, you have titanium panels that have to be unlocked by unlocking that backspacer. Once you unlock it and then lift it out, you can then swivel 
the titanium covers out of the way and it exposes the frame lock, the frame I should say, underneath. But there's also a price difference here of, oh, let's see, well, not, not a huge difference here because of, of, of my version here having the fat carbon, but against the base version, this is 350 these are between 420 and 450 depending on where, where and when you buy them. So there's a little bit of a price difference there. This is obviously a lot more of a traditional knife, even though it still has very sleek, futuristic lines. This takes that much, much further. So this is much less of a traditional looking knife right here. And then one more, just to give you a good size comparison against the Brian Brown Knives Jaeger M. So many people have that knife, and I want to give you a size comparison there right up against it. So uh, not... Not a huge difference there, but still a bit of a difference. Now let's get the weight out of the way. I think the weight may have been listed on the box, but I really wasn't reading it. All right, you ready for this? 4.4 ounces. Very easy to carry. Not an overweight fat pig at all. A really good EDC weight that still feels substantial. Putting it up against the Tasca 2, 3.3. So just about an ounce difference. I told you this was going to be lighter. But now let's put it up against the more compact, the smaller Jaeger M. You're going to go from 4.3 ounces. Wow, the exact same weight? I thought that was going to be just a tiny bit heavier. There's no way they're the same weight. That's insanity significantly larger knife same weight in the pocket crazy and then up against that that's 4.5 ounces oh. all right i'm going to talk about the one and only con about the knife i can nitpick on the packaging all i want at the end of the day, it's just a box. We, we really don't care all that much. The only thing that irks me about this knife is the blade window. I don't understand why it's there. You, it, you cannot, I don't care what you do, you are not ever going to reverse flick this knife with that blade window and its size, and how close it is in relation to the pivot, which I, I'm, let's see. Pivot's right there. There's no way you're ever going to reverse flick it. I can't thumb flick it because it's got a, uh, it's got a fairly strong detent. I, it's, it feels like it's a flat face detent. I haven't looked in there, um, but it's a very sharp, pronounced detent break. So, it's just too difficult. You don't have the leverage. Plus, you're pushing the blade down and you're pushing the frame lock with the detent ball in it tighter together. You're, there's, you're never going to manually open that unless you do it two-handed like I just did right there. That is the only way you're ever going to manually open this knife. So, if you're not a flipper fan, this is not the knife for you. I love flippers, so it works out perfectly for me. But we've seen so many knives lately that give you these multiple options to be able to flick your knife with your thumb or your finger or use the flipper tab. Even the Tasco, as, as tiny as that window is, I can still do it in there because it's longer. I can access it further down or further up wherever I want to be, it's a li it, it, it doesn't look any wider, but it's, it feels like it for some reason. The detent is set differently. The opening is in a different place where it corresponds to the pivot. So I would have just preferred not even having that. It looks fine. I mean, it looks good with the, when the knife is open. There's nothing wrong with the design, but it just doesn't make any sense. 
Um, I do wish that there was a little more relief or at least a little scallop here that allows you to get into the lock just a little bit easier. Now, the, the lock is not difficult to get into. Please don't mistake what I'm saying. It's very easy to get into. But there are people that are, we're, you know, we're spoiled. It's, it's, we have so many knives that give us easier access that we could just swipe right across. This, you got to do it the old-fashioned way. You got to dig your thumb in there and really get into that lock bar. But that's it. That is the, the limits of my gripes. And they're not real gripes because I'm happy to just look at that as an ornamental uh, uh, design cue and not as something functional. It just, it, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work for, for anything. So that's it. That's, that's my only gripe. And if that's all I've got to complain about, it's pretty awesome. Now let's talk about the price for a minute. You know, 300, I'm not even going to go on the price of this one because you can't buy these now. These are all sold out. Uh, believe me, I have searched and searched and searched and searched. This version is done. So let's say you buy the marbled carbon fiber version from Blade HQ or MechForce's website directly or, or wherever you want to buy it from. I know Blade HQ is a dealer. And you want to pay $350 for it. There is some stiff competition nowadays in that price range. I would really, really have liked to have seen the base model version at 300 Now, I, I know it doesn't sound like a huge difference, but it is. It could mean having to cut some sort of corners in the manufacturing. It could mean a number of things. But you also need to keep in mind, for those that are going to say the same thing about the price, I'm okay with it because I know that this is not 100% made in China. This knife is made in China. This knife is made in China. The other knife I showed you is a handmade custom, so that's irrelevant. These, this is three, these start, these are 330. So within 20 bucks. For this to only be a few dollars more than a 100% Chinese made knife, that's incredible, to be perfectly honest with you. These are a little more expensive. This is a numbered, limited production knife that through its production cycles will have different editions that will be special, made once, never made again, or made in maybe a seasonal thing. Maybe you'll have your pumpkin spice M1. I don't know. With the majority of the work and the parts being made here in the U.S., I can't bitch about the price. I know there's always somebody that will, but I just don't see it. Because I could point you to a lot of 100% Chinese made knives right now that have a similar action, that have a similar feel, that are made to a similar quality, that will cost you more money. 400, 425, 475 even. So to see this at 350 to 385, with anything American, I feel is a good deal. For me, though, I, I, I just I, I want to see the packaging change. The packaging is fine if, if that's how the flashlights come and stuff like that. That's cool. I'd put this, even if it was just in a small nylon zippered pouch with the brand name on it and all the goodies thrown inside, would be awesome. Sure, it'd be great to have a little, like, Pelican-style or Otter-style plastic box. That's super cool. But that shit gets expensive, baby. And that price, that, that cost gets, you know, passed down to you as the consumer. Or even if it was the white cardboard box, maybe a little less going on. I mean, they... Maybe they own their own printing company, too, and they just wanted to maximize as much printing as they could get out. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, that's the only thing that takes away from the experience for me. If I had bought this on the secondary market and the first owner had lost the packaging and just sent this in a zippered case, 
I honestly believe I would have felt like it was a more even a more high-end knife. Another thing that I love is very limited branding on this. Very small maker's mark on there. The blade is marked what blade steel it is. And that's it from the exterior. When you look inside, that's where you see Mech Force written out. But that's also where you see your limited edition status as well. So this was very carefully designed to be low-key, sleek, uncluttered by not having the hardware exposed. To then have such busy packaging, it seems like a wild juxtaposition to me. So that's all I've got to say about it. Um, if you take away the fact that this is a line of products that's coming out from a company that didn't start by making knives, you know, we've had bad experiences with that, put that out of your mind for a minute because I don't feel a bit of that when I handle this knife. That's not a concern. If you put these little things aside that you may have in your own head just from seeing these online and actually give it a chance and put it in your hand, I promise you, you're going to be very, very pleasantly surprised. All of the finishing work on this is wonderfully executed. Great machining. All around, they did a lot of the right things. Oh, pardon me. I just had the most riotous sneeze, and I did not want to do that into the microphone. So as I was saying, they made a lot of fantastic decisions on the important shit, on the knife itself. The way that it feels, the way that it's designed... It's got, a pre it's got a nice edge on it. It would be nice if it was a little bit thinner behind the edge, but again, this is an EDC knife. It doesn't need to slice ribbons all day. You're going to be cutting a, a wide variety of things. The lockup is bank vault solid. I think they did a hell of a damn good job. I'm excited to see what happens in the future, though. I think that in 10 years, scratch that, 5 years, you're going to look back on this and go, can you believe we got that excited about this when this is what they're doing now and this is what they're able to achieve and this is the design aesthetic they went into? I think that we're going to look at this and go, this was a very competent first outing. I think we're going to carry this and we're going to enjoy it for its slim sleekness, its lightweightness in the pocket, and all of the, 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 the goodies to look at and feel. But I have a very sneaking suspicion that they're about to up their game. I just hope they don't leave this behind. We've seen a lot of companies do that. Where they have a really fantastic initial offering that everybody seems to like when they get it in their hand and it becomes very popular. And they decide, okay, well, we're going in this direction now. And they leave behind the model that we initially fell in love with, or at least met that brand or met that maker with. So I hope they always keep this in the lineup as they develop their new products, because I think a lot of people are going to get a, a lot of enjoyment out of this knife. It feels, it feels very stout. It feels tough. It doesn't feel wimpy in any way. But it doesn't feel like I'm carrying a friggin' brick around in my pocket either. I've only carried this about four times now, four, maybe five. And I've carried it all day today. And it's a pleasure to carry. And the more I look at it, the more attracted I am to it. So yeah, I'm excited to see what happens in the future for these guys. I'm very happy for them. I'm glad I had the opportunity to check this out because the, the, the representation online does not do it justice. It just, it doesn't. Pictures don't do it justice. Nothing. 
This is one of the times that I'm going to tell you, you really do have to experience it for yourself in hand to really get it. And if you already look at the pictures and go, oh, I kind of dig that. That's pretty cool. Then you're going to, you're going to probably want to lay down a drop cloth because you're, you're going to squirt everywhere when the mailman drops it off. But for those that are on the fence, hop off the fence. I think that you're really going to enjoy this one. Again, like I said in the intro, doesn't matter to me if you buy a knife or not. doesn't change my life at all. But this is one that's going to be staying in my collection. This is one that I'm going to be carrying on a fairly regular basis. Because I enjoy it. It fits my hand well. It carries very well. It's got a great action. It's, it's boom, 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 boom. It, just, it, it ticks almost all of the boxes for me. Wish it had a little more fidget factor. I wish that was in some way an opening slot window. But that's it. Everything else about it, I think it's pretty badass. All right, I have talked long enough. Let me get out of here for now, and I will catch you guys on the next video.